it's your teacher again that the cause and uh, this video will be the continuation of our electrochemical cell that we started and here we want to look at the standard hydrogen electrode SHE and what is the use of a standard hydrogen electrode now I told you in the last in the previous video that when you connect two half cells together that is a metal that is in contact with its own solution like we have here a zinc half cell this is a copper half cell you can see copper metal is brown in color and this copper sulfate solution is blue in color so this one is zinc metal deep inside zinc sulfate so and you connect them through a salt bridge that you are going to see a flow of current or if you like electron will flow from the higher to the lower one and if you connect a voltmeter through them like if you connect a, a voltmeter to the wire that you are going to get a particular voltage reading showing that electric current is produced so this is the volt re voltmeter reading now showing that between copper and uh, this zinc that that's 0 0.89 uh, of current is being transferred or voltage rather this is a voltage reading voltmeter reading so, so 0.89 volts voltage is being transferred now <clears throat> this 0.89 voltage you cannot say it is the one produced by the zinc half cell or that is the one produced by the copper half cell there is no instrument to be able to determine out of this 0 0.89 which one is the contribution of one and which is the contribution of another but we can get what will be the voltage when the two of them are connected so we want to know out of the total voltage produced which one is the electro potential of copper there then which one is the electro potential of the other element there so for us to know we have to there's no way to 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 you know you know to know with a single half cell you cannot measure the electro potential coming out from a single half cell except you connect it to another half cell so so now so now to be able to know this we have to create another half cell that we are going to give a voltage of zero to for example if this is uh, a zero voltage now and i don't know what this one is normally and, 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 and i don't know what copper is normally if i connect the one of zero voltage to copper and i read the re and i check the reading then i know that okay oh, this copper is the one producing everything here because already the other one has been assigned zero voltage so so this is what brought about the use of the standard hydrogen electrode it's an electrode like every other half cell however we choose to give hydrogen electrode zero volts so that if you connect it to another half cell whose electro potential we don't know so whatever will be the reading on our voltmeter will be the reading of that second half cell since already we have accrued or assigned zero volts to hydrogen so that's the technology that we use in chemistry to know the electro potential of the second of another half cell which is uh, produced from the voltage so we so we take the standard hydrogen electrode and give it a potential difference of zero volts then we connect it to another half cell which has a normal potential difference that we don't know so whatever is the reading on the voltmeter will be the reading of the potential difference of the second half cell because the hydrogen electrode has been given zero volts so as so i said that the standard hydrogen electrode is assigned zero volts so it is used as a reference to measure the electro potential of other half cell so it's a standard reference if you want to know the other 
have cell electropotential. Now you can be asked in your exam that you should describe a standard hydrogen electrode or if you like, that what is a standard hydrogen electrode. This would be the reply or the response that will fetch you four marks. It's a four mark question. Describe standard hydrogen electrode. <clears throat> you are going to say that hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius. That is, there's a glass tube there's a glass tube that is containing hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas is maintained at 25 degrees Celsius, right? That's 28 Kelvin here. And inside the glass tube, there's a platinum wire or a platinum rod. Because hydrogen is a, a non-metal, cannot conduct. So you, so you make the hydrogen gas to saturate a platinum wire inside that glass so we put a so we put a platinum wire inside the glass and then we now bubble hydrogen gas into the gas at one atmosphere don't forget that the standard condition for measuring electrical potential if gas is involved is one atmosphere solution involved one mole per dm cube then temperature is always 25 degrees celsius so the inert platinum electrode is put there and then hydrogen gas is bubbled inside at one atmosphere. Then you now make that platinum electrode to be touching a solution of hydrogen ion. Can you see H plus solution? One mole of hydrogen ion inside this solution. So as the inert electrode is touching that hydrogen ion solution that is being you know, in contact with hydrogen gas, what you have is called a standard hydrogen electrode. So I, so I said that in this place, that it consists of hydrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius. See hydrogen gas inside at 25 degrees Celsius. Bubbling around the platinum wire. And that wire is in contact with one molar solution of hydrogen ion. That is a standard hydrogen electrode hydrogen gas at 25 degrees celsius and one atmosphere that is bubbling around an inner platinum wire and that platinum wire is touching one molar solution of hydrogen ion this is what you call standard hydrogen electrode and this electrode has been deliberately assigned a potential difference of zero volts so how then do I measure electrode potential of another element by using the standard hydrogen electrode? Good. What you do is you connect your standard, uh, your electrode potential of that other element. In this case, zinc. Can you see zinc electrode now? Zinc inside a uh, zinc solution. So you connect it to a standard hydrogen electrode. Can you see the standard hydrogen electrode? This one, where hydrogen gas is in contact with a one molar solution of its own ion through a platinum wire. Good. So this is standard hydrogen electrode. This one is a zinc electrode. So I want to know what is the electro potential of zinc alone. Go, 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 go. What is the electro potential of zinc? So. What I will do is this, I will connect the zinc half cell, join it to hydrogen electrode, if you like, call it hydrogen half cell. So when you connect it, then use voltmeter to check the reading. Whatever reading is on the voltmeter, don't forget to put your salt bridge to allow movement of ions. So whatever is in this is in the is is is, is on the voltmeter. That will be the standard uh, electro potential of zinc, right? Because we know that the one of hydrogen is zero volts. So if what is written here is 0 0.6, that means whatever is here is 0 0.6 volts. So the value here now belongs to the to zinc half cell alone, since hydrogen half cell is already what zero volts. 
So, so this is how you measure the electro potential of an unknown meta by connecting it to a standard reference. And what's that standard reference? Is standard hydrogen electrode. Now that is not all. An electro potential value always have signs, either positive sign or negative sign. Now do not forget that whatever re reading is on the voltmeter, that is the electro potential, the magnitude now of the second half cell, since hydrogen is zero volts. Now, electro potential always have signs, either positive or negative. So how do you know when your electro potential sign will be negative and when it will be positive? Now, how you know depends on the direction of the flow of electron. Do not forget that your higher meta is always the anode, while your lower meta is always the cathode. So if you connect the meta half cell and you join it to hydrogen half cell, if the meta is higher than hydrogen in the activity series, then surely electron will have to flow from the meta and flow to hydrogen half cell. But if hydrogen is higher, then electron will then hydrogen will be the anode, then the electron will flow from hydrogen to the meta. So in this case, we know that the meta is zinc. So electron will flow from the meta zinc to hydrogen half cell. Whenever electron flows from the meta and flow to hydrogen cell, the sign of the electro potential will be negative. So every meta that is higher than hydrogen in the electrochemical series, they are going to have negative sign of electro potential because electron will flow from them to hydrogen. So whenever electron flows from a metal half cell to hydrogen half cell, the sign of the electro potential will be negative. But when you connect a metal lower than hydrogen in the in the in the electrochemical series to hydrogen electrode, then electron will have to flow from hydrogen to that metal half cell. Whenever electron flow from hydrogen electrode to metal half cell then the sign of the electro potential will be positive. So the next time when you see electro potential value and it's positive, it tells you that that meta is lower than hydrogen in the activity series. So electron will flow, if you connect the meta to hydrogen cell, electron will flow from hydrogen to that meta. But if you see, a meta, uh, but if you see an electro potential that is negative, that means if you join the half cell to hydrogen, then electron will flow from the meta to hydrogen because the meta is higher than hydrogen in the electrochemical series. So take home on this is that when you see a, when you see a negative electro potential, it means that the meta half cell will give electron that is, that is electron will transfer from the meta half cell to hydrogen electrode. But if it's positive, electron will move from hydrogen electrode. To the meta half cell. So, how do you measure standard electro potential using standard hydrogen electrode? Number one, you connect the half cell to a standard hydrogen electrode. Then, number two, the reading on the voltmeter shows the EMF of the cell. Since we have already assigned zero volts to uh, the half cell, whatever is being read is the uh, the electro potential of the second meta half cell. So the sign of the electro potential depends on how the electron is flowing. If, if electron flow from the from the standard electro potential uh, from the standard hydrogen electrode and flow to the meta half cell, then the sign be is be, is positive. But if but if electron moves from the meta half cell to hydrogen electrode, then the sign of the potential difference or the electro potential now will be negative. So the EMF of a cell can be measured, I've said it before, by using either potentiometer 
or a digital vote meter. Now, what can we do with the values of standard electoral potential? What are the uses of the values of standard electoral potential? Number one, it can be used to calculate the EMF of a cell. In our next video, I'll, 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 I'll talk about the EMF of a cell. So, it can, in fact, that is what we use to calculate the EMF of a cell, the electoral potential of the two electrodes. Then number two, it can help us to predict the spontaneity of a chemical reaction. Spontaneity means feasibility. Feasibility means workability. That is, whether a cell will work or will not work, we can determine it from the values of standard electrode potential. So, we are, we, are, we are going to deal with that, how you can determine feasibility or spontaneity of a chemical reaction by using the EMF value of that cell. Then number three, it's used to predict the standard electro potential of an unknown element. If I see element that I don't know before, I can create an half cell of the element, connect it to a standard, uh, to standard electro potential, and you know get the reading of my vote meter, then see what kind of reading it is bringing out. So from the reading, I can attribute the metal to a particular element that has that similar reading. Then number next, it can be used to predict the direction of electron flow. Now we know that electron will always flow from higher meta to lower meta. Now higher meta are those that have smaller electrode potential. As you can see that the negative ones are always higher than hydrogen, whereas the positive ones are always lower than hydrogen. So the more, the, the, the uh, sorry, the smaller the electrode potential, then the more the ability of the element to act as anode. Then the bigger the value of the electro potential, then the more the value, uh, then the more the tendency to act as cathode. So we are saying that once you know the electro potential of two elements, you can predict what will be the direction of electron flow. So electron will flow from higher meta, which will carry a lower reduction potential or electro potential and we flow to a lower meta that always have a higher reduction potential. So these are the uses of the values of standard electrode potential. So based on what we have discussed on standard hydrogen electrode, you can have an alternative definition of standard electrode potential. So you can define the standard electro potential as a tendency of an element to form ions in solution. You know that when the element is higher than hydrogen, the element will dissolve and give electron to hydrogen. So, but if hydrogen is higher than the element in the electrochemical series, is hydrogen gas that we, you know, dissolve and produce hydrogen ion and transfer the, the lost electron to the metal. So, whether the element will form ion and give electron to hydrogen, or hydrogen will form ion and give electron to the metal, depends on the standard electro potential of either the metal or the uh, hydrogen electrode. So, the tendency of an element to form ion in solution compared to the tendency of hydrogen atoms to form ions in solution at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, and one molar concentration. That those are standard conditions. So you so you call that the standard electrode potential of the element. So you can also render the definition of a standard electrode potential as this instead of the first one that I gave to you in the previous video. So any of them will be accepted by you uh, uh, by exam body for the purpose of mark but both of them are correct definitions tendency of an element to form ions in solution relative to the tendency of hydrogen atom to form ions in solution are standard conditions of 25 degrees Celsius one atmosphere and one molar solution of concentration so an exercise one the standard electro potential of copper is plus 0.34 volts explain the meaning of the statement. 
Now, if you are asked to explain the meaning of this statement, what they ask you to do is this. This, this is a pure exam question, like it has come out several times. So you have to really understand the technique to answering this question. So you are told that the standard electoral potential of copper is plus 0.34 volts. That you explain the meaning of this statement. Now the meaning is that, number one, how do you get standard electrical potential? Is by connecting the metal half cell to hydrogen electrode, isn't it? So what I'm going to say is that when copper half cell, this copper half cell, don't forget the abbreviation of copper half cell. When copper half cell, so, so write it as Cu2 plus aqueous slash Cu solid. So when copper half cell is connected to a standard hydrogen electrode, the reading on the voltmeter is 0 0.34 voltage. That is how you answer that. Then you now account for the sign in front. Then I say that the positive sign in front indicates that electron flows from hydrogen electrode into copper half cell. And that's how you get your full three marks when you ask to explain why uh, explain the meaning of that kind of statement. They have asked it in terms of copper, they've asked it in terms of uh, zinc also. So anyone that you have been asked, you can answer your question like that. Mention standard hydrogen electrode. Mention that you connect it to the copper half cell because you need that, uh, that, that, that hydrogen electrode as the standard reference. Then also tell us that what is read on the voltmeter is 0.34 volt or whatever voltage you are giving for the for the element then talk about the sign in front of the electrode potential if it's positive electron moves from meta uh, electron moves from the hydrogen electrode to meta but if it's negative the electron moves from meta to hydrogen electrode so uh, so we we'll continue this video this topic in the next video god bless you amen